So when we think about time, we have a tendency to think about time as a line, a timeline essentially, with different uh, points along the line. Yeah? Um, and when we think about the past, I think this is not unreasonable to think about it as a line, as a sequence of events that happen one after the other. Um, I think most people would agree that um, even if we have different ideas about the past, different interpretations of the past, it, we can't change the past and, and it can be described as a sequence of events that could be placed on a line. But when we talk about the future, we're talking about the space of potential. And um, there are obviously different possibilities in that future. And so for the future, it makes more sense to think about it as in a 3D image in the shape of a cone. And the future, not as a point in time, but as a space um, with actually many different, or there's actually an infinity of different points on that space. and there are many different timelines that could fit within that cone. And of course, if we, um, if we think about a shorter amount of time into the future, like five years, the future space is smaller. And if we think 15 years into the future, that future space um, of potential is greater. Um, and it's helpful, we find it helpful, to look at um, the different, um, yeah, different elements of that future space. And so if we, um, if we project all the trends of today into the future, we come up with a projected, uh, we come up with a projected future, the, the, the projections. So with climate space, for example, climate change, I mean, that's uh, very helpful to know where our current trends are taking us. Um, if everything continues as it is, where are we gonna end up? It's clearly not a desirable place. Um, and it's not even the most probable necessarily because we also know that we are changing things. Um, so beyond the projected space, there's a larger space that's the space of the probable. So what is likely to happen? What do we think will happen? Um, and so this is the conversation where we're trying to predict the future, where we're maybe having conversations about what I think will happen, what you think will happen, and we'll pat ourselves on the back if we're right in the future. So we would like to be right about um, what's likely to happen. Um, and that conversation is the, is the conversation of the probable, but it's also quite a limited conversation when talking about the future. Um, the, the greater space beyond the probable is the space of the plausible. So it may not be likely to happen, but we believe with our current knowledge that it could happen. So what do people today actually, what are they able to imagine could, could happen? Um, and uh, the space beyond the plausible is, there's a, there's a greater space here actually of what is possible um, that we, we don't believe today that that's possible, but, it, but we'll know with future knowledge that it was possible. And there are many things that we can think of that we didn't expect to happen, and, um, or that we didn't think could happen, and they happened anyway. So that's the space of the possible. So there simply is a greater space than we can imagine today. And so this is, this is the space of the future, um, the future cone. Um, there's another space, which is the space of the desirable. Uh, and when we, when we work with scenarios, this is important to be aware of as well. And the space of the desirable is essentially cross-cutting here. So there's a part of the probable future that's desirable. There's a part of the plausible future. There's a part of the possible future that's desirable. And there's a part of the desirable future that's actually impossible. It can never happen. It's preposterous. Um, and it's in the space of fantasy. So we like to distinguish between fantasy and imagination. Fantasy is when we're just projecting either our highest hopes or our deepest fears onto the future and it's actually coming from, from us. It's not coming from really um, the reality. Um, and usually, uh, many times when we work with visioning or when we're working on our ultimate desires, we get into the space of the preposterous and of fantasy. What we're trying to do um, with scenarios is to work in the space of the plausible, but we're also looking to expand the space of the plausible by challenging our imaginations. So can we 
develop scenarios that challenge people's imaginations, that make them see that something they couldn't imagine before, that they didn't think was plausible, is actually plausible. And in that way, we're challenging the imagination, we're challenging the mindsets. So we're looking at pushing the edges of plausibility through telling um, these stories of the future that, that, that we can tell in a logical uh, in a logical way, in a sequence of events, and that, that expands the understanding of, of, of what can happen. Um, and when we, when we decide together as a scenario team what, what scenarios to, to, to share, um, some of those scenarios may be in the desirable, in the space of the desirable. Some of them may be, or one of them may be in the space of the probable as well. Sometimes you want to tell a, what you might call a status quo scenario. You want to actually show um, what, is, what, what, what is likely to happen if, if, if major things don't change. Um, one of the scenario team members here was talking about sleepwalking into disaster. Uh, so if you think we're sleepwalking into disaster, that's useful. Um, it's useful to tell that scenario to make that visible. Um, but we're also looking at scenarios that are not necessarily desirable. And of course, what's desirable is different to different people. Um, and here we're looking at identifying some scenarios that are at the edges of plausibility because that's where it's most challenging and where it's most likely to to, um, to push the imagination, to expand the imagination. And we're also looking for scenarios that are in different parts of that plausible space that are not so close together, that are sort of in, um, in different directions because that will make them different from one another, it will make the, it more clear, and it also provides a more systemic and comprehensive picture of that future space. So that's what we'll be working with here, is to identify to, to expand the space of the plausible first and then to identify four different stories that need to be told that are in different um, parts of that plausible space.